Dyslexia, focus on ability. Hi, my name is Mike Juggins and this is a short film about me, my past, my dreams and the challenges I face. I will try to show you my strengths and how I use them when working with others. So, okay, let's get started. I was born in a small village called Sutton Benger in Wiltshire in the year England last won the World Cup. So yes, a very long time ago. As a dyslexic child in a word-based education system, I struggled to achieve. However, my love for TV and sport, particularly football, enabled me to experience success and enjoy my childhood. Alongside sports and relaxing with friends and family is my passion for the arts. I have a BA Honours from the University of West of England. Art in a social context. I have worked as a community artist and filmmaker for over 15 years and enjoy the challenge and rewards of working with others. I believe that accessible information motivates success and always work in a multi-sensory way. I have personal experience of dealing with a learning difficulty and understand the necessity of using all types of mediums and tools to enable clear and inclusive communication. My mantra on the social implications of dyslexia remains. Dyslexia focus on ability. My work as a disability campaigner has provided me with the opportunity to show films, give talks and deliver inspiring workshops across the globe. I've also been published widely, including the Times Educational Supplement and appeared on Radio 4. Alongside my skills as a digital artist and enabler sits my love for painting. It is my creative high place where I channel colour, gesture and emotion in a free state of mind, a form of visual jazz. So, introduction over. I will now show you a short film I made in 2005 that was based on my dissertation from 1999 and a subsequent article that was published in the Times Educational Supplement. Hi, my name's Mike Juggins. I am very visual and very dyslexic and have made this film to raise greater awareness and appreciation of dyslexia. Since leaving university six years ago, I have worked tirelessly to end the educational and social discrimination of dyslexics. Six years of sweaty bloody tears and the issue is still as burning as ever. But change is being slowed down by cranky academics and business people trying to push a new cure, remediation tool, exercise routine, overlay or special school. Some of these things might help the few, whilst the majority continue to join the unemployment, mental health and prison statistics. I believe that dyslexia is a whole mindset, a way of seeing, a way of being. Yes, it does affect literacy, numeracy, organisation and memory, but for me, I wouldn't have it any other way. It is who I am, and I'm not embarrassed. In fact, I'm proud to call myself dyslexic. However, it's taken me a long time to come to terms with this realisation, and I understand that many other dyslexics would want to be anything but dyslexic. The wisdom inherent in the Chinese problem, if I hear, I forget, if I see, I understand, if I do, I remember, can be seen in modern thinking regards learning styles, auditory, visual, kinesthetic. We know how and why people learn differently, but still we teach and test using predominantly text-based methods. We need more multi-sensory teaching. Multi-sensory meaning more senses. Often it is not the fault of the dyslexic that they didn't learn at school. Providing suitable learning environments is the responsibility of society as a whole. Usually the pressure to adapt is placed on the individual and 
this can cause a great deal of stress. With as many as 40% of the prison population being dyslexic, change can't come soon enough. What is needed is more dyslexics involved in policy making and in the classroom, and less talk of cures. I want to see this government take the issue seriously. It is fine to crack the odd joke about dyslexics, but for many people, being dyslexic is no laughing matter. Dyslexics continue to drown in our mainstream. We need to change the way we teach and focus on ability. Let's change the shape of the whole. The next film sees dyslexic poet Justin Coe explain in verse what it is like for most dyslexic learners in our word-based education system. He reads the same simple sentence again. The sense of it simply will not sink in. He's the jumble boy who can't spell his name. The panic runs manic in his brain. Letters give him jitters, jest and jinx him. He reads the same simple sentence again. But it's too hard for him. He can't explain. The problem is he can't stop from thinking. He's the jumble boy who can't spell his name. Teachers can't reach him but to shout his shame. He's not got a clue, they've not an inkling. He reads the same simple sentence again. One dream day he'll teach them He'll find his aim and curse the world with a verse worth printing of the jumble boy who can't spell his name. But now Jane likes Peter. Peter likes Jane. And he hates the school and all who shrink him. He reads the same simple sentence again. Just the jumble boy who can't spell his name. Recent research suggests a staggering 60% of the prison population are dyslexic. This needs to change. The following film was made by three dyslexic young men that had been involved with the local youth offending team. One step back, two steps forward. Some dyslexics have trouble with memory and literacy. Others might have difficulty communicating verbally and organising themselves. One person's weakness is another person's strength. Many dyslexics are visually strong and good with problem solving. However, no dyslexic is the same.
One person's weakness is another person's strength. We are all different. Without dyslexia, we wouldn't be us. It's part of who we are. Learn to relax about your difficulties. Don't be scared for asking for help. Believe in what you're good at. Be determined and rise above it. My value base on the issue of dyslexia is based not only on my own experience. The following video, called We Are Dyslexic, shows that most dyslexics share a common history of underachieving at school and carrying low self-esteem into adult life. The Dyslexia Foundation, based on Merseyside, provide a great example of the support and better awareness needed across the whole country. Dyslexia Foundation Supporting Dyslexics Finding out you are dyslexic uh, Not so very late. Um, I always knew there was something wrong but I didn't actually get assessed till I was about uh, 45. I found out when I was in secondary school uh, because I'd got really good grades on a test which made me think that I was on the reading and then couldn't spell a single word <laughs> on the spelling test. I always thought I was thick. Then the job centre sent me here. Then once I got tested with screen, I said I found I was dyslexic. What was school like? It was so awful. It was, I was involved with everything and you just sort of got left, you know. Treated as a thick person, sat at the back of the class and actually was told that I would be um, for the rest of my life, always be stupid and never achieve anything. Just, you know, the marketplace was wide open, so as long as you could actually read and write to a certain level, you weren't sort of put under any pressure to do qualifications. I left without any qualifications whatsoever, and a week later I was working. So I can't really say that school was uh, sort of a pressure pot. You know? They said that I was slow, I was lazy. They just put me in a room, like a little box room, you know, and left me there and just gave me stuff to do and it was horrible. Horrendous. Um, secondary school, my entire secondary school education, I attended a residential school for what was so maladjusted boys. Um, although it, it was alright the school, my dyslexia was never assessed and I remember seeing on one report that I had an IQ of 86. School's difficult. I got through it, didn't get the exam marks I want, but people had wasted my time because I always felt I was clever than what they were saying. I mean, I was always putting the picky class at school. I was with kids who couldn't tell they was doing a tiger and a lion. I used to think, what's going on here? I know the difference. You know, it's just I couldn't read. Well, at first I couldn't read all right, but then I could read and I could read as well as anybody else and nobody ever picked it up. And you think, what a waste. A student of below academic standard, and that has stuck in my brain forever. Help from the job centre. Uh, they didn't. They, they haven't given me any. Government schemes, I done them. I left them because when it comes to the paperwork, I left them because I couldn't do the paperwork. And that's, that's been my life my way of life all the time. There are so many people out there that have got dreams and visions to do something and move forward and they have got it and it's just like intelligence 
clever people, but they're not recognised because of the fact that they don't fit in the norms, you'd say. More awareness training on SPLDs for employers and employment services needs to be done. Has the Dyslexia Foundation helped? Having hid it for 40 years, it was nice to speak to somebody who, who, could, who, who understood it. And, and I, having hid it for all that time, and lots of quest questions I had asked. Having my dyslexia support means that at least once a week somebody can go, so what are you actually doing? And it's that one-to-one -one contact which you just don't get at the university, which really helps me focus. And it, it's shown improvements in my grades hugely. For me, the best dyslexia support I've received is from my tutor. She helps me with work, she helps me um, understanding problems, building up skills such as note taking. Um, I really appreciate all the help that she gives me. As soon as I came in the door of, of uh, Liverpool Dyslexia Foundation, I immediately knew that the help was there. It was like, um, Everyone else had spoken to sort of like, yeah, yeah, they, they sort of nod their head, but they don't really understand. And they're not really bothered, to be quite honest. But once I came in, into the door of this place, I could see that the people um, were empathetic to, to the situation, but also had a, a holistic understanding of what it's all about. So I knew at last I could relax and say, oh, this is, this is where it's at and this is what it's like. And, and I knew that they understood what I was saying. So it was like, it took a big load off me. So it's just, it's just amazing to be able to have the feeling of, I can do it. And having somebody else saying, yeah, you can do it. Any other thoughts? It doesn't affect me so much now at work because I've, I've dealt with it from a young age. So when I was younger, it did affect me quite a bit. And I thought I couldn't do certain things. I thought I couldn't go and work with children because I thought, well, if I don't, don't know them things, I can't be expected to teach them to someone. So I always thought like that when I was younger, and it's as I've got older and I've learned to deal with it. When you've got to accept things and move on, you can't be stuck in, um, in the same place. You've got to be ready for change. No, I think it's helping people because I've had a lot of people that's helped me along the way, and then knowing that some people do need help. And you wouldn't ask for it always. Yeah, I, I say if you feel that there's a difficulty with what you have, then go and seek help and be like, find out for sure what it is rather than sort of like lock yourself up and sort of like allow yourself to be sort of like discriminated at and sort of like be pressured into just like telling them that you're thick when you're not. It's just probably dyslexia. Yeah, do the course. <laughs> First and foremost, do the course, find out about it, get on it, and speak to people. Um, don't be afraid of it, um, see if there's something positive. Don't hide away from it, or hide your dyslexia, I suggest. It's, it's an head on, and, um, and treat it as a, as a positive, really, uh, because there's plenty of positives to get from dyslexia. And I would like to see a national campaign uh, or national agenda in uh, raising public awareness. Finding out that you are dyslexic is quite hard to do, you know, to go through the right channels. It, it sort of took a while to find out that you existed and so I suppose the awareness of the support uh, can always be improved, can it, um, for, for, for more people to know about it and, and, and obviously because it's not rare Dyslexia Foundation, supporting dyslexics. In order to raise the mood here, the following film is another poem by Justin Coe. It makes me smile. Uh, it's, a, well, it's, it's fine because it's about um, the kind of, you know, difficulties in learning something, not the difficulties in learning guitar, but in my case, the difficulties in learning how to put your pants on in the morning. So this song's really kind of aimed at the three-year-old in you, really. Um, but feel free to join in on the chorus if you like. You don't need to be shy of me. It just goes like this. For quite a long time. Mama. 
on, said son, come on, put your clothes on. No matter how ever hard I tried, I couldn't get to grips with the laces and the sips. I put my pants on upside down and cried. Mummy, it's hard to put your pants on in the morning, and it's hard to take your pants off at night. It's hard to put them on, and it's hard to take them off. It's hard to put your pants on. Right, I hope you learned that. I met a fashion warden out one morning while journeying into the early hours. He gave me a ticket. He said, Son, you're just not with it. My pants were over the top of my trousers. Come on, I said, officer, it's hard to put your pants on in the morning. Thank you, man. <laughs> and it's hard to take your pants off at night. It's hard to put them on, isn't it? And it's hard to take them off, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to take your pants off right. To get better at my letters. So now I hardly ever get them wrong. But I'm best at getting dressed in the underpants and vest. Yeah, I can take them off and put them on. Yeah, one more time. It's hard to put your pants on in the morning. And it's hard to take your pants off at night It's hard to put them on And it's hard to take them off It's hard to put your pants on and right Yeah, I can put my pants on tight <laughs> <laughs> So there you go I have spent 16 years working on the educational and social implications of dyslexia. What I have learnt and believe we need to do as a society is to screen for dyslexia as early as possible and then support a dyslexic thinker to develop through all levels of our education system. Better awareness, advice and support at work also needs to happen soon. Are you listening trade unions? Finally, a fully accessible website carrying video stories of struggle and hope needs to be made urgently. An online place with very few written words, yet full of real knowledge and understanding that will inform, empower and inspire dyslexic people to heal themselves and learn to focus on ability.